Hello and welcome back. We're going to go ahead today and talk about permanent MRI units and superconducting MR units. And we're going to talk about the difference between the two. Now, we obviously are going to find more of the superconducting MR units in a clinical environment, but we do sometimes find these low field or ultra low field permanent MRI units. And the difference between them are pretty straightforward. We can imagine that a permanent MR unit is going to essentially have a magnet on top of our patient and below our patient. All right. Sometimes it's in a C formation, but these MRI units typically don't achieve high field strengths. We don't really see these really go beyond 0.6 uh, Tesla, and even that isn't pushing it. Typically we find these in the very, very below ultra low MRI um, field strengths. And these permanent MR units, what makes them unique is how our B0 is formed. So when we look at an MRI unit along the lines of this, we look at it as any other magnet. A magnet has lines of flux traveling from the north to south pole. On a permanent MR unit, we find these lines traveling vertically. So we've got a vertical B0 with these MR units. These are typically larger units. We have, a, um, we have different types of materials that we can use for this. Typically they're alloys, um, but they're magnet, magnetic. Um, neodymium is probably the most common alloy that's used in, to, in this uh, to make this magnet, this vertical B0, the strong enough magnetic field to align those hydrogen in our patient to create that net magnetism. So we have this permanent MR unit. Now on the contrary to that, we have superconducting MR units. These are typically larger units. So we can picture this as a unit that will have a different B0. We're going to create this magnetic field differently. Where our magnetic field, our B0, is created with these permanent magnets and a permanent MR unit. In a superconducting MR unit, we're using a solenoid. So what we're doing is we're taking this wire and we're wrapping it around something that uh, is typically an iron core of some sort, something that is uh, ferrous. And then we're running a current through it, so we're charging it. We run a current through it, and once we run a current through that, we produce this magnetic field. Very similar to taking a nail and wrapping a wire around it, and then attaching it to a battery, and turning it into a magnet. What we notice is we have these lines of flux that travel in a different orientation. All right, they're gonna travel horizontally. So we have a horizontal B0 with superconducting MR units. But what makes these even more interesting and what allows us to reach these ultra high field strengths is that we submerge this in cryogen. So we have this cryostat that we take this coil of wire and we put it in. We fill that cryostat with liquid helium. So liquid helium, super cold, 4 Kelvin. And then we actually do something really neat. All right? This is plugged into the wall, charged up. So once we charge this magnet, we have it in this cryostat. And once it's in this cryostat, we can unplug it from the wall. And we don't lose any of this magnetic field inside of it. It still remains charged because we're not losing any energy in the form of heat or with ohmic heating. So we have this system now that is contained these coils of wire are submerged in this cryogen, liquid helium, and we can reach these high field strengths. We charge it up to 1.5, 3 Tesla, 7 Tesla, and it remains there. So these are not plugged into the wall. That means that if the power goes out in our site, this magnet is still on. If there's a fire in the room, this magnet is still on. Until this cryogen is removed from this magnet, this magnetic field is always on. And again, a takeaway from this magnet is that we have a horizontal B0. All right. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.